Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Intel Core Ultra CPUs are here, but what's the best Z890 motherboard for the Ultra 9 285K, the Ultra 7 265K, and Ultra 5 245K? We'll cover the new features in the Z890 motherboard chipset and make specific product recommendations for the best budget Z890 motherboard, the best Z890 motherboard for gaming, and best Z890 motherboard for creators. If you get value out of this video, please give it a like so it really helps out the channel and subscribe for more cool PC content. With that, let's jump into it. Intel Z890 motherboards are on the new LGA 1851 socket and thus only compatible with the just launched Intel Core Ultra 9 285K and KF, Core Ultra 7 265K and KF, and Core Ultra 5 245K and KF CPUs. Now these CPUs are all unlocked, meaning they can be overclocked on a Z890 motherboard. Based on previous CPU launches, we anticipate B-series LGA 1851 motherboards and locked versions of the Intel Core Ultra 200 CPUs in early 2025, but we have no confirmed details on them yet. And Z890 motherboards are not compatible with Intel's older 12th, 13th, or 14th generation CPUs. So what's new with the Intel Z890 motherboards? As a baseline, Z890 motherboards add an additional four PCIe Gen 5 lanes of bandwidth over Z790 motherboards while converting over the eight PCIe Gen 3 lanes into four PCIe Gen 4 lanes. What this means is more and faster USB connections, more M.2 drives, and a guaranteed PCIe Gen 5 speed GPU slot. I'm still not convinced anyone needs a Gen 5 GPU slot just yet, but it's baseline with the Z890 chipset. For M.2 NVMe SSDs, with the exception of the cheapest boards, all the ATX size Z890 motherboards include at least four NVMe SSD slots, with some boards having five, six, even seven M.2 NVMe SSD slots. Yes, some boards have seven M.2 slots. Thunderbolt 4 control is now built directly into the CPU. So if you use Thunderbolt 4 for external high-speed storage connections, typically in professional environments, then you'll be happy to know that Z890 motherboards offer at least one and up to two built-in Thunderbolt 4 ports. If you're confused between Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4, they're very similar, but there are some important differences, and I'll leave an article linked down in the video description talking about the differences between each. For networking, all the currently available Z890 motherboards offer at least 2.5 gigabits per second wired speed and at least Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.3. However, many of the boards go quite a bit beyond this, offering five gigabits or faster wired networking and Wi-Fi 7 along with Bluetooth 5.4. Z890 motherboards also bring the same toolless PC building features that we've recently seen in the 800 series AMD motherboards to the Intel platform. Easy GPU release one button mechanisms, toolless latches for the M.2 NVMe SSD heatsinks, and easy install features for the M.2 NVMe drives themselves, as well as easy connect Wi Fi antennas, have found their way into many mid range and even some budget Z890 motherboards. MSI has also added a supplemental power PCIe 8 pin connector to the bottom of all their Z890 motherboards, something that MSI claims makes their motherboards ATX 3.1 compliant and provides extra power to ensure maximum stability when using ultra high end and super power hungry components. If you want to use this optional connection, you will need a power supply with enough PCIe cables. Let's talk Z890 motherboard RAM because there are lots of changes. First, Z890 is DDR5 only. No more split support with DDR4 as with previous generation motherboards. Secondly, a new type of DDR5 stick is coming to the PC enthusiast space. Current sticks are called dual inline memory modules or DIMM for short. Desktop PCs currently use unbuffered DIMMs or UDIMMs for short. The new sticks have an extra little control module to communicate with the CPU memory controller and are called clocked unbuffered dual inline memory modules or CU DIMMs for short. Now at the time of recording, CU DIMMs aren't available on the US retail market yet, so I don't have any idea on the cost, but we do expect them by the end of the year. Whether you're using a regular DIMM or a CU DIMM, it's only gonna matter for those looking to push extreme memory speeds, as Intel Core Ultra CPU baseline memory speed for DIMMs is 5,600 mega transfers per second, basically the same as 13th and 14th gen CPUs. But for those using CU DIMMs, the baseline memory speed is gonna be 6,400 mega transfers per second. Remember, all PC enthusiast RAM is intended to be overclocked faster than the baseline speed, either using a one-click overclock like Intel's XMP profiles that you activate in the BIOS, 
or by manually tuning the RAM. The faster you go over the baseline speed, the harder it is to maintain stability. So if you wanna push speeds above 8,000 mega transfers, it's likely that the CU DIMMs will be required. Without pricing or testing data, it's really hard to say what RAM speed and kits make the most sense, but we'll include this information when we publish our build guides, so stay subscribed for that. But what about the VRMs? Do you have square of power delivery on the boards and the heat sinks to dissipate the heat? Is it gonna be enough for an Ultra 9 285K? At the time of filming, no VRM testing has been done, but as we've seen with recent motherboard generations, on paper, the VRMs of virtually every Z890 motherboard that I've seen, they seem overbuilt even for the core Ultra 9 285K. Particularly given that we expect significantly less power draw from this architecture versus 13th and 14th gen Intel i9 CPUs. Finally, in terms of motherboard audio, remember, you're only using the motherboard audio processing when you plug in an analog plug like this into either the front panel of your PC case or the rear audio output on the motherboard. If you're using a digital connection like USB or HDMI, you're bypassing the motherboard audio and offloading that to a secondary device. Outside of the budget Z890 motherboards, most of the Z890 motherboards use an audio codec of at least ALC1220 or ALC4080, which both have maximum onboard support and many feature a robust looking audio solution. Let's jump into our specific Z890 motherboard picks, all of which are linked down in the video description. I'm using the pre-order pricing in the US with currently available Z890 motherboards. Now prices, they always float around a lot after a launch. So check out those links for current pricing and availability in your region. And I'll try and give a number of options in each category. Also, big thank you to MSI and Gigabyte for sending me some Z890 motherboards ahead of the launch. I am expecting ASUS and ASRock boards as well, they just didn't make it here in time for the video. Let's jump into the best budget Z890 motherboard. We're gonna start off on the ATX side. We'll get to micro ATX boards. There's only a handful of them that are currently available. We'll talk about them later in the video. So we're seeing on the ATX side, the ATX side, and there's not a lot of distance between price-wise between some of these ultra budget boards and the more mid-range boards that have better features. I will say some of the ultra budget boards also lack Thunderbolt support on them, even though that's supposed to be part of the Z890 spec, they just haven't. Maybe they've substituted USB 4 instead for it. But let me get to the board that I actually like if you're on a budget, but you're still looking to put together typically like a hybrid kind of production and gaming PC out there. I like the ASRock Z890 Pro-A Wi-Fi. Relatively cheap board. The VRMs are quite good on it. 16 plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Power phases, I don't know why we're plus one-ing all the time. It has four M.2 slots on it. Again, you're gonna get PCI Gen 5, uh, one M.2, as well as PCI Gen 5 at the main GPU slot on just about all of these boards. Has more basic audio, it's ALC897 instead of the higher end codecs. However, it does have four audio capacitors. For some reason, not all these boards have four or more audio capacitors, which has been the standard for a long, long time. In terms of the rear panel, it does not come with a built-in I.O. port. Again, you're buying the ultra budget board for $199 right now. The non-Wi-Fi version, I will say, it's only $10 less. So I would obviously get this one instead because you get Bluetooth as well as the Wi-Fi on if you wanna connect Bluetooth devices to it. That's a big plus. It does have Thunderbolt support. One of those ports is Thunderbolt. And then it's got four other high-speed USB ports to it for lower-speed USB 2.0 ports. Again, this is kind of a no must, no fuss kind of board. If you just need the cheapest thing to get in there, let's jump in the best Z890 motherboard for gaming, for gaming. So we're looking for upgraded audio here, typically ALC 1220 or ALC 4080. I believe almost all of these are 1220 though. They've gone back to that standard. And we're looking for 4M.2s, good uh, VRM heat sinks, and tons and tons of rear panel USB connectivity on it. My number one price and performance board right now as the pricing lies, again, we do expect it to probably change a little bit, is the ASRock Z890 Live Mixer Wi-Fi. So it's got Wi-Fi 7 on it. It's got ALC 1220 upgraded audio on it. Although only three audio capacitors, we could do a little better here at ASRock. But I think if you're looking for kind of the, the sweet spot board without overspending even a single dollar, this is a pretty good option. It's got four M.2s, three of them have heat shields, one of them does not have a heat shield here in the middle. And then in terms of its rear panel connections, this is I think where this board really, really shines. It's got just tons and tons of higher speed USB ports on the rear panel. Look at that, it's got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it's got the two Thunderbolt ports as well, and then it's got two USB 2.0 ports as well. 
tons and tons of connections. If you're somebody who's got lots of devices to plug in, this is a great board. And $240 is insanely cheap. Not that much more than some of the budget tier motherboards. As we move up into the stack, we're gonna see better audio and we're gonna see postcode readouts, postcode readouts. Oh my goodness. I thought these things were dead on motherboards under like a $500 motherboard, but they are basically back. There it is right there in the upper right hand corner. It's a postcode readout. What is a postcode readout? If you're bored, especially if you're trying to do any overclock or anything or trying to do faster RAM overclocking. If your board basically won't boot for some reason, this will give you a readout as to where it's at in the process, help you debug it. I think every motherboard should come with them. I've said that for a long time now. It is nice to see them come back. Let's start off with Gigabyte Z890 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7. This is the board you saw next to me. There's also a black version of this basically for $289 in this same identical board. One has white PCB, white heat sinks. One has black heat PCB and black heat sinks on it. Pretty good audio section on that. Look at that ALC 1220 audio, obviously more robust than what we just saw from the kind of more uh, lower mid range ASRock board there in terms of the total number of capacitors, inductors, et cetera. So at least on paper, it looks better. Obviously don't have the testing data for it. I will say not a huge fan of the number of ports on the back of the Gigabyte board here for the Z890, but maybe you just don't even need this many. So it's got three of the blue ports, which is five gigabit per second type A's on them. And then it's got two of the red ports, which is the 10 gigabit ones. And then you've got the Thunderbolt port along with four USB 2.0 ports. It's like mice, keyboards, and other things. So if this is enough IO for you. Maybe this is a great board, especially with the, uh, the postcode readout here at the top. And it's got power reset and everything on the board. I do like this quite a bit for 289. From MSI, you've got the MSI Pro Z890 A Wi-Fi 289. And then you've got the MSI Tomahawk for 299. And these are functionally the same boards, slightly different styling, obviously, in, not just in terms of the aesthetics, but the Tomahawk has one additional M.2. All of its M.2s have heat spreaders over them. So that's two thumbs up there. 299, obviously a little bit more expensive than the Gigabyte board, but I will say they both also come with, look at that, it's a postcode readout. Postcode readouts are back on some of these motherboards. Super excited about that. So great, uh, great for MSI to also offer that feature on it. Obviously MSI also offers these new PCIe power ports on the bottom of the board there, as we just saw. Uh, they say it adds stability when you're using super high-end components like an RTX 4090 or maybe 5090 in the future. Both these boards have ALC 1220 audio on them, pretty good looking audio section on them. And I will say the one area that these boards are probably dominant over those gigabyte boards is the rear panel USB connectivity. So we've got four 10 gigabit ports here, including a Type-C, and we've got four five gigabit ports here along with the two Thunderbolt ports. So that's really good in terms of its overall connectivity and it's got Wi-Fi 7 on it. So both these boards are pretty good options if you'd like MSI. Over on the ASUS side, we've got two boards here. They're both the ASUS Tough Boards. One's the Tough Plus. It's the black board for 319 and you can currently pick it up at retail as I'm recording this. And then we've got the Tough Pro board and that is only available through pre-order right now. I'm told it should hit retail shelves relatively soon and it's the whiteboard, and this is the Tough Pro version. The differences between them, relatively minor, but let's talk about the differences between them and the other boards. No postcode readout on these motherboards. Again, 319 and 329 for these boards. You can make it that what you will. I will say the styling on both these boards looks absolutely amazing, especially this kind of, all, all this metal plate here looks super, super awesome. Both have ALC 1220 audio, however, only three audio capacitors on them. You know, make of that what you will. In terms of the rear panel USB connectivity, the Tough Pro has most of the ports, at least all the type A ports on the back are 10 gigabit per second. And then it's got two Thunderbolt ports on it as well. And it has the full suite of audio outputs as well and it's got that easy Wi-Fi 7 connection. Both these also offer four M.2 slots. Meanwhile, in terms of the Plus version, basically they downgrade three of the USB type A ports on the rear panel to just the five gigabit. So you've got three total, 10 gig, and then you've got three of the five gig type A's. Then you've got a 20 gigabit USB type C port and one Thunderbolt port on the back. Let's jump to the best micro ATX Z890 motherboard. There's only really two I want to talk about. Anything below this, you can kind of skip. This SUS board that's $10 less, it's fine. It's just fine. I like this board, however, for $239. This is the Gigabyte Z890M Aorus Elite. Now, there's an ice version, which is the white version of this, and then there's a non-ice version, which has that kind of typical more black styling to it. I can't find that one in the US right now. Maybe it'll come, maybe it won't. But for $240, 
three M.2s on it, all of them with the toolless, super awesome uh, heat spreaders on them. It's got uh, basic audio on it, but it does have four audio capacitors, which is two thumbs up. The rear panel is very nice uh, in terms of its connectivity. Four of the lower speed USB 2.0 ports, but it's got also four USB five gig ports, and it's got a type C, which is USB four, along with a USB 3.2 port. Really like that, and Wi-Fi seven with a quick release audio. It looks amazing, and it's $239. The ASRock Z890M Riptide, it's worth a mention here. It is $260, I think it's a little expensive. What it gets right here, ALC 1220 audio, however, only two capacitors on the audio solution. That's kind of just, ah, not really sure about that. You can see them right there but it does have M.2 heat spreaders for everything. The board looks nice and rear panel USB connectivity is quite phenomenal. Although this is only Wi-Fi 6C, if you're looking for Wi-Fi 7, you're gonna have to grab a different board, but this does rival some of the better ATX size board, not even Microtex, ATX size boards out there for $260. All right, the best premium creator Z890 motherboard out there. And remember, any of the motherboards that we went through for the gaming side would be perfectly good for 90% of the creators out there. But if you are somebody who also wants to basically turn your PC into a network attached storage, storage device, I love the ASUS ROG Strix Z890-E gaming Wi-Fi because you can have seven M.2s on this. Now you're gonna need quite a big PSU to power all those M.2s, remember that, remember that. Take all that into account when you size your PSU out there. But that is absolutely insane. It's got a super robust VRM on it and with all the additional M.2 and Thunderbolt and USB connectivity to it, this just becomes a super awesome creator platform. It's got two Thunderbolt ports on the back, two USB Type-C 10 gig ports, and then it's just got a ton of Type-A 10 gig ports along with three five gigabit ports, Wi-Fi 7 on it, five gigabit ethernet. Overall, if you want something that not only turns your PC into a super creator PC, but a super data storage PC, <laughs> network attached storage device, this is the one to get for $499. Remember, everything is linked down in the video description, so check out those links for current pricing and availability, and if prices change, I'll change up the recommendations as well. If you got value out of this video, please give a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel, and of course, subscribe for more cool PC content, like some of the build guides that we're gonna do around Intel Core Ultra CPUs. Check them out, and we'll catch you on the next one.